All right, pre-calculus kids, we're looking at section 9-2, an introduction, before we get into the actual section itself, talking about reference angles in the unit circle. And so this brings up a different topic. It's called reference angles. It's different than reference triangles that we were talking about back in the last section. So a reference angle is an angle made with the closest x-axis. So if I'm at 60 degrees, 60 degrees, remember all this, this is 0, this is 90 degrees, 180, you have those blue sheets that help you with this, but I know you know what I'm talking about. If I'm 60 degrees, I'm somewhere in this neighborhood right here. This would be a 60 degrees, between z uh, 0 and 90 degrees. If I were to think about what the angle would be to the closest x-axis, that would be this angle right in here, and that angle happens to be 60 degrees. So if I go to the cosine of 60 degrees, if I go to my calculator, and I say, all right, Mr. Calculator, what is the cosine of 60 degrees? It says 0.5. Okay, great, that's what my cosine would be. It is 0.5. If I come over to uh, where 120 degrees, 120 degrees would fall over here somewhere between 90 and 180. And so if I make an angle that goes to the closest x-axis, I'm talking about this angle right in here. Now think about that. How far is it from 120 degrees to 180 degrees? It's actually 60 degrees kind of cool. This is a 60 degree angle as well. That's what the reference angle would be for 120 degrees. This would be a 60 degree angle as well. Now if I go to my calculator and I say, okay, Mr. Calculator, what's the cosine of 120? I wonder, wonder what it's going to be. Is there any comparison that I can make? If I look at that, the cosine is a negative 0.5. You see how they're kind of related? This one's going to be a negative 0.5. And we can talk in a minute about why that is, why it's negative instead of just being positive. If I come down to 240, well, 240 is between 180 and 270. It would be in this neck of the woods. This would be my 240 degree angle. If I'm thinking reference angles, the reference angle would be made with the x-axis. It would be this angle in here. And to go from 180 to 240, I've gone another 60 degrees. So my reference angle is actually 60 degrees. If I go to my calculator and I say, okay, calc, what is the cosine of 240? it says it's a negative 0.5 as well. If I go to 300 degrees, well 300 degrees would be somewhere in this neck of the woods between 270 and 360. If I think about his distance from the x-axis, it's 60 degrees again. If I go to my calculator and I say, okay calculator, what is the cosine of 300 degrees? It's a positive 0.5. So you see those reference angles um, that you can use them to kind of calculate all sorts of different places. If the reference angles are the same, then your values are going to be the same. The only thing that's different is if they're positive or if they're negative. And we kind of can go back to um, when we were looking at the chart for uh, what quadrants the angles are, uh, positive or negative. Everybody's positive in the first. Sine and cosecant are positive in the second. Everybody else is negative. In the third, um, tangent and cotangent are positive, everybody else is negative. And in the fourth quadrant, cosine's positive and everybody else is negative. So it all fits with those things that we learned about which quadrant is which. A couple things about reference angles uh, to note is they are always positive. It doesn't matter because it's just looking at how far from the x-axis it is. So you always have, when they ask you for reference angles, they're always positive. And the second thing about them is that they're always acute. Do you remember what that means to be acute? Oh, you're a cute little angle. Um, acute is less than 90. So between 0 is less than or equal to and 90 degrees. It's got to be between 0 and 90 degrees. That's an acute angle. All right, so... The next questions that are going to have you do in this section is, all right, now find me some reference angles. So what you need to do is you're going to graph the actual angle that they give you, and then you're going to see how far it is to the closest x-axis. That's your reference angle. So if I'm 140 degrees 
You know this is 0, this is 90, this is 180. So 140 is going to be over here somewhere. This is my 140 degree angle. The question's asking you how far is it to the closest x-axis? Well, you wouldn't be combining it over here because that's pretty far. If I look at this, how far is that to the closest x-axis? The question is how big is that angle? And that angle to go from 140 to 180 would be 40 degrees. Now here's what they usually do. They'll usually do, sometimes they'll do it, a theta prime. They'll put a little apostrophe next to that, meaning reference angle. Your reference angle is 40 degrees. It's always positive and it's always acute. 40 degrees is less than 90 and so you know you're good. Alright, second one, negative 280. So now I've got to go in a negative direction. This is 0, this is negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. I'm going negative 280. That tells me where I'm heading here. I'm heading all the way over here into the first quadrant in a negative direction. This would be negative 280. Now a full circle closes it up at 360. This would be a negative 360. So the question wants to know how far is it from that to the closest x-axis. So that would be this angle in here. If I think about that, to go from 280 to 360, how far do I need to go? And your answer would be 80 degrees. Your reference angle, theta prime, is 80 degrees. It's positive and it's acute. And you've got your answer for that. All right, now we're talking pi language. If you don't like the pi's, change it into degrees. You remember the conversion if you needed to. Conversion is multiplied by 180 over pi. You could do that. I'm going to leave it as pi over 3, and we'll see where it happens to go. This is 0, this is pi. I'm going 1 third, pi over 3, 1 third, of the way to pi. So I'm not going to quite make it to half a pi which is what this would be. So this is pi over 3. I'm a third of the way to pi. Well, interestingly enough, if I'm thinking reference angles, it ends up that to the closest x-axis is this angle right in here. It's the same thing. You're allowed to have sames in this. Remember code terminals? We had to come up with something different, but this isn't, this isn't that. They're asking you for the reference angle. How far is it from to the closest x-axis? Your answer would be pi over 3. And it's going to so happen that any angle that falls into the first quadrant when it's a positive angle is going to be exactly the same thing as the reference angle. They're one and the same. Alright, last one like this before we change to something else. Negative 5 pi over 3, well that's like negative 1 and 2 thirds pi. I'm going negative 1 and 2 thirds pi. So here I am going 1 pi in a negative direction. I have to go two-thirds of the way more. I'm not going to make it to two pi. I'm not going to close my circle. That's the best I got. So that's negative one and two-thirds. Negative one and two-thirds pi. The question is, how far is it to the closest x-axis? That would be this part right in here. And if I'm at two-thirds of the way, it takes me one-third more to close that up. This would be one-third pi. Same thing as pi over three. My pen doesn't want to write. I'll put it this way. Pi over 3. Alright, that's a little quick call on reference angles. Different than reference triangles, it's how far it is to the closest x-axis. And so then it's going to bring us to talking about the lovely unit circle. So this, my friends, is a unit circle. It's the same thing that we have uh, painted in the back of the classroom, if we could see it, right? Um, the unit circle and we talked about this before, is a circle whose radius is 1. A circle whose radius is 1. So if I'm at the center of the circle and I go to the edge of the circle, no matter where I land, it's a, a distance of 1. The radius is 1. And it turns out in a unit circle it's kind of neat. You've got all these angles, you've got them in degrees all the way around, you've got the corresponding, if you were to convert them, what the uh, radian equivalents would be all the way around. And then you've got these coordinates that get matched up at each of those places. You saw this on the video that you watched that was creating the unit circle. So this is the same thing um, as what you saw in the video. But it's neat because you can figure out all the six trig functions. And by the way, they only pick these angles because they're the most popular ones. Like you'll notice they didn't pick 
an angle that's 100 degrees because we don't use 100 degrees very often. So they pick the angles that are used most often and they're the ones that are on your unit circle. So each one gives you a coordinate and in that coordinate, you've got a coordinate at each place, you have an X value and you have a Y value. And if you remember a couple sections ago, we talked about how in a unit circle, the sign is whatever the Y value is divided by the radius, which is 1. We have a radius of 1. So the sign is whatever the Y coordinate is. The cosine is X divided by 1, or just the X coordinate. And the tangent you get by dividing them, Y divided by X. And so if you know the coordinate, you know that this value right here, the x value, this guy tells you the cosine, and this guy, the y value, tells you the sine. You've got to do a little bit of work to get to the tangent, but um, it's still pretty easy to do. It's the y divided by x. Now that means that if you were talking about their friends, cosecant would be 1 divided by the y, reciprocal with sine, Cosine goes with secant, his friend, he would be 1 divided by x, and cotangent would be the reciprocal with tangent, so it would be the x divided by the y. And so from that one coordinate, you really can find all six trig functions. So let's look at some of these. If I'm looking at the circle, I want the sine of 225 degrees. So all you need to do is go to the sine function, your sine function is, uh, look, go to 225, where's 225, here it is, this coordinate. The sine is the y value, so go to the coordinate, what's the y value? I look at the y value, it is a negative square root of 2 over 2, and that's your answer. You just leave it like that, don't put it into a decimal form, just leave it as the, as the uh, fraction that it is. If I go to 300 degrees and I want the cosine, here's my coordinate, cosine is the x value, you can see it right here, cosine is the x value, so my answer is 1 half. Now that kind of goes with where we were in the very, very beginning of the lesson, talking about reference angles, because remember we looked this up on the calculator and it was 0.5. So there you go. Tangent of 45, if I come to 45 degrees, I have the square root of 2 over 2 for the y, square root of 2 over 2 for the x. Remember that it's the y, square root of 2 over 2, divided by the x, square root of 2 over 2. That is plum ugly. but if I have ugly divided by the same ugly, it equals 1. And so that's your answer for tangent of 45. I can do the same thing if I was talking about pi language. If I'm in pi language, 7 pi over 6. I go to 7 pi over 6. Here it is. I'm looking at this coordinate. I want the secant. So I want 1 divided by the y value. Well, the y value is a negative 1 half. So if I have 1 divided by a negative 1 half, oh, y times, flip it, negative 2 over 1, um, divided by the fraction, you've got to multiply by the reciprocal. And so I end up with negative 2 over 1 or negative 2, and that's my value. And if you think about flipping a negative 1 half, if I reciprocal that, I get negative 2. So it all kind of fits together. All right, next one. If I have the secant of pi over 6, so I go to pi over 6. Here's pi over 6. Secant is 1 over the x value. Oh, man. If I take 1 divided by the square root of 3 over 2, my x value, I'm like, oh, got to flip that. But I'm ugging because when I flip it, now i got to rationalize it. 2 over the square root of 3. I'm going to keep going next to it here, square root of 3 over the square root of 3. And I end up with 2 square roots of 3 over 3. That would be my secant. A little more work. All right, last one before we try something else. If I go to the cotangent of 2 pi over 3, I've got to find 2 pi over 3. Here it is. I am taking this coordinate. Cotangent is the x divided by the y. So I'm going to take negative 1 half, and I'm going to divide it by the square root of 3 over 2. So here's what that's going to look like. I've got to multiply by the reciprocal of the second guy. Negative 1 over 2 times, flip it, 2 over the square root of 3. 2's cancel. I get negative 1 over the square root of 3. And the math police would take me away if I didn't rationalize that, so that's what I'm going to do next. I get a negative square root of 3 over 3, and that is your answer for cotangent of 2 pi over 3. Some of these take a little bit of work. 
I'm going to show you a shortcut in a minute. All right, the last ones, I can't really keep the, I uh, oh, can't really see the unit circle for this one too well. So we're going to, I'm just going to show you these and then we'll come up with how about these. How about these? The sine of 180. So if I go to 180, here's the coordinate. The coordinate is negative 1, 0. You can see that on the circle up above. Sine is the y value. All right, it's 0. There it is. How about the cosine of 90 degrees? If I go to 90 degrees and think of its coordinate, it's 0, 1. Cosine is the x value. That's 0. So some of these are not a whole lot of work, right? If I go to tangent, I still have 90 degrees, so my coordinate is 0, 1. Tangent is the y divided by the x, or 1 divided by 0. And you say, whoa, I can't do that. I can't divide by a 0. Remember, we're not allowed to have 0 denominators. This guy is undefined. Remember slope, dude? Undefined. All right, cosecant of 180, I'm going to look for the coordinate. The coordinate is negative 1, 0. Cosine is, or cosecant is reciprocal with sine. Sine is the y value. So if I take that y value for sine, it would be of 180. We set it up right up above, equal 0 over, if I were to put that like a regular whole number, it would be 0 over 1. If I flip that, now I have 1 divided by 0, and again, that can't happen. That's another undefined. Anytime you get a 0 denominator, it's not going to work. If I go to 3 pi over 2, the coordinate is 0, negative 1. Secant goes with cosine. Cosine is the x value. So cosine of 3 pi over 2 would be uh, 0 over 1. If I flip that, now I get 1 divided by 0, I get another undefined. And the last one is pi over 2. The coordinate that goes with pi over 2 is 0, 1. Cotangent is the x divided by the y. So if I have the x, it's 0. The y is 1. Oh, I am allowed to have that. 0 over 1 is just a 0. All right, so how on earth are you going to keep all of this straight? And I'm going to give you the handy dandy lovely chart, this guy. This is going to be in your notes. If I look at this, let me take one of the ones we just did. We just did the cosine of 90 degrees right up there. So I'm looking at this chart. If I go to cosine of 90 degrees, I get an answer of 0. Well, that's the same thing I just said on my notes right here. So this handy dandy chart has taken all of the coordinates from around the unit circle and put them into a chart form. And you're going to be able to look, even if they give you the negatives, if I asked you for the, the sine of a negative 225 degree angle, you get the negative 225, come across to where it has sine, your answer is the square root of 2 over 2. If I asked you for the secant of negative 5 pi over 6, negative 5 pi over 6 is over here. I come across to secant. Uh, secant is negative 2 squared to 3 over 3. So I can ask you any number of values for this, uh, for these trig functions. And all you need to do is use this handy dandy chart to be able to figure out what they are. So um, that's it for our practice problems, for our intro problems. Um, next I'll do for you some practice problems from section 9-2 and we'll talk more about how to use this chart to be able to do it. Have a great day. See ya.